Greetings. In the last episode, we uh, repaired an Atari C pinball CPU board. It worked fine on the bench. So what I'm doing now is I am slowly putting together the machine itself. Unfortunately, the, the machine was missing a few parts. And today we're going to look at the display or what is left of the display or was supplied to me. For those of you not familiar with it, this is the main score display which has four rows of uh, six digit uh, gas plasma seven segment displays. It's a non-obtainium part driven by plus minus 90 volts and uh, I guess somebody got to this machine before I did and pulled the display glass. So uh, not, not a whole lot we can do about that. Uh, in the last episode uh, I showed the uh, bench test display I built to be able to test the CPU board and make sure that it is driving the display correctly. But here are the actual displays. Obviously we cannot test this one because the glass is missing. Second of all, uh, the uh, supply voltage to these is plus minus 90 volts and when I plug this display in, I mean both assemblies, this is a score display and this is the status display, the uh, minus 90 volts got pulled down to minus 20 and it turns out that there is yet another short on this board that's pulling the minus voltage down. However, when I disconnected it, uh, the voltages were both correct at 90 volts. So let's see if we can at least get something coming out of the status display. The status display has uh, two uh, double two double digit displays. One shows it shows various things, but it shows you the number generally the number of uh, games you have racked up, uh, ball in play, and in the test mode it actually gives you like the uh, switch number that's stuck, the solenoid that's being run and all of that. But we're all hooked up. Let's turn it on and see what happens. So uh, these glasses over here are a bit lazy. There's been some, I mean this one came up almost immediately. It took a little while and then this came on. But you can immediately see that there are there is stuff missing here. And what is missing on this one is basically the top segments. The A segment of every seven, uh, seven digit display is not lighting up. So that gives us that gives us a great hint to what's going on here. Remember this is a scan display so all of the uh, segments are tied together and the way it'll work is it, it will enable first this display put the proper value for the A segment in it and so on for the rest of the displays so they're all tied together and since the top display or the top segment is missing the likelihood of it uh, of all four displays missing the A segment is very low and since it's being dr uh, driven by a common signal it pretty much tells us where the problem lies so what we're going to have to do is take this guy out now they built these displays in two variations the early, early displays had discrete transistors to drive the segments and uh, the individual segments and of course the displays as a whole. Later versions had integrated circuits that were able to handle up to uh, 100 volts to do all the switching. Those, uh, uh, those ICs are also very hard, well they've been out of production for a really long time because nobody needs them anymore. But I guess early on somebody decided that it would be cheaper to do it this way which it probably, it was cheaper material-wise, but 
there were a lot of transistors that had to be assembled. So they actually switched to the integrated circuits later on. But in this case, we have the driver transistors and we have a seven segment decoder up here. So uh, let's have a look at the schematics and see if we can figure out who may be at fault. Looking at the schematics, we can see that uh, the segment data is coming in through here. That's coming directly off the CPU board. And we saw in the last episode that it lit up all of the segments and everything. So again, we can assume that the data coming in into here is correct. Segment A is the one that seems to be not working. It comes out of pin 13 of an LCD decoder driver, and, uh, which is a CMOS MC4511. It'll turn on this transistor, which acts as a pre-driver for this transistor, which then goes out and drives the A segment. So, uh, the problem is, or problem could be, either or both of these transistors are bad, or this chip went bad and is not driving this correctly. So it's time to take out the board, put it on the bench, and proceed from there. I put the display on the bench and the first thing I did was remove the diffuser that was on these displays. I looked at the uh, video footage and you could barely see, or you couldn't see, that these top segments weren't actually lit. I tried to get rid of the adhesive, but I guess uh, there's something else here because the adhesive is gone, but there's still cloudiness on it, but we should be able to see it better than before. So first I uh, pulled the two transistors that drive the A segment bus, this one and this one. I tested them with the handy dandy multifunction tester, and they both read as working. However, since they were out, I figured let's replace them anyway. Weirder things have happened, and uh, transistors are pretty cheap. So I put two new ones in it, and uh, drum roll, it didn't work. Same thing. Everything came on except that the top segments didn't light up. So the only thing remaining then was that uh, the CD4511 decoder that takes a binary input and outputs uh, a bit for each segment, that the one outputting the A segment, the pin outputting the A segment was bad. So I uh, pulled this guy, the existing one, socketed it and put a new one in here. So now we've pretty much replaced everything, well almost, you know, we've replaced everything that should light up segment A, assuming of course that the rest of the digit lights up so that the digit select signal is working, but anything re uh, required to do the segment A select is contained, well, in these two transistors the decoder and a bunch of resistors. But I did check all of the resistors. I checked continuity on all the traces and everything seems okay. So, and we know that the signal coming in is good because we bench tested it last time in, in last time's video. So, uh, let's go over to the machine, plug it in and see if it actually works. Taking an optimistic view of the repair, I have reinstalled it plugged in the high voltage power and the data lines on it. And uh, since I've pretty much replaced everything for the A segments, let's give her a whirl. And here we go. And the machine doesn't turn on because the safety interlock in the coin door is disengaged. So we try again. Here we go. And there it is. Also notice that the displays lit up immediately. 
generally the plasma displays get uh, have a little bit of leakage and get lazy and it takes a bit of time for them to come up but I guess these ones came up before and they were cold I hadn't turned it on before starting to film so why I don't know but they seem to work fine the only other thing we need to check is okay it's showing all eight so let's try to put some digits on here and see if they show up correctly. So first we can coin up the machine and you can see the right display showing us the number of credits we have and the other way is uh, another thing we can do is put it into test mode so there you go again I'm not sure what the 8 means, but 3 means it's set up for 3 ball play. And then if we hit the button again, nothing happens. Okay, we should be in test mode now. So uh, if I engage a switch, it should make its oink oink sound and show the number of the switch. That was one of the coin switches. A rollover. So uh, that seems to be working and the last test is a solenoid test and uh, well it shows a one the buttons the flipper buttons don't work yet so I can't advance you have to use the flipper buttons to advance change which solenoid you're testing I think the right flipper button does that and then the left flipper button actually activates the solenoid. But I think this is proof enough that at least this status display is working correctly. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and uh, do all the other good stuff. And leave me a comment. And if you got any extra Atari pinball parts floating around you don't need, you know whom to contact. See you next time.